lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club. Now our next guest fell into the cafe industry as an employee back in the 1980s, sorting cutlery in the rooftop restaurant in Cleary's department store. But by the early 90s, he was managing Bewley's a flagship store on Grafton Street. Drawing on all of his experiences, good and bad, businessman Colin O'Brien has recently published Feeding Johnny, which documents his highs and lows in the world of business. Colin, good morning to you. Sinead, lovely to be here. Thank you very much for having me along. Thrilled to have you here. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. Uh, which I read very last excited. night. It's a great, very oh, easy read. read. Well I did. Well it was very, you, very good. You. I would like to go back to the beginning. Okay. You were growing up. Uh, tell us where you came from, first of all. Northside Dub. Okay. Uh, Mam and Dad. Uh, you know, I always say that we were very blessed to be, to be born into this situation we were. Uh, Warren Buffett talks about the ovarian lottery. My ticket happened to have me born in the 1960s, Northside Dublin, to parents who loved each other, who were married. Dad always worked for a living. Mam was always a stay-at-home mom. So it was virtually perfect. No money, but it was perfect. <laughs> now, your dad, you were saying, as we were chatting earlier on, your dad worked for someone else all his live-long life. And that began to irk you, even on maybe a subconscious level. Yeah, well, I, I began to study uh, how some people... I began to be curious as to how some people got ahead and other people didn't. And uh, I began to study it probably 20 years ago or 25 years ago at this stage. When it wasn't very trendy, when people weren't writing these sort of books. No, no, yeah. it, was, it was only beginning. And, uh, and and I decided that for me, I wanted to see what I was made of. Um, I, Dad has been great. And he ended up going into business for himself or becoming self-employed many years later, uh, which was great. But, uh, you know, I, just, I, I was fascinated and still am fascinated about the difference in things thinking that keeps somebody in a job or has that person become self-employed or indeed has that person go on to be, become a business owner. So how do you navigate your way from sorting cutlery out in, in <laughs> Cleary's restaurant to owning a business which turns over five million a year? A lot of hard work. Yeah. Uh, willing to take knocks. I think the, the starting point is a decision. That, that, that's what you want to do, that you want to get, you know, you want to create something for yourself. And uh, once that decision is made, well, then you're open to opportunity. If, if you don't make that decision, the opportunities will just pass you by. Now, you were managing the flagship store of Beauties on Grafton Street, yeah, yeah. which sadly now we know is, uh, is, is on tougher times, to say the least. But you then decided to manage your own uh, cafe away from that, and that failed. Yeah, I was the franchise, sorry, Beauty's uh, manager in Beauty's and Grafton Street. Then I was the franchise manager for, for mm. Beauty's Cafes, which took me outside the pale. And I founded the Beauty's franchise in Limerick, which we took on in 1998, myself and my wife, Aideen. And was that taking a big risk when you did that? Con? Not really. No, yeah. it was a calculated risk yeah. because I had a huge amount of experience in the industry and with the brand, the Beauty's brand at the time. So it was very calculated. Uh, but it failed. Ultimately, it, it, it died uh, a, a sad death in 2005, mainly to do with the Celtic Tiger. I have a piece in the book there called the fecking Celtic Tiger and uh, <laughs> uh, because the Celtic Tiger has you know upset this country hugely and uh, we happen to have been victim of it at one stage and I believe we've come through the far end and coming out the Did that leave you personally with massive deaths and oh, yeah. you did? Yeah, yeah. So how do you, and we were discussing this earlier on because I do think they're going to discover some kind of entrepreneurial gene in years to come, that when everything falls to pieces, when your business collapses around your ears, whether it be by your own hand or financial circumstances surrounding you like the Celtic Tiger, mm. the ability to then pick yourself up after that and carry on and remake yourself is really what it's all about. It really is about getting yeah. back up again and I think that's a decision everybody uh, can take. Um, nobody goes into business to fail. I, I think that, that's a given. They go into business to make something of it and probably of themselves. Yes, uh, every successful businessman and woman has failed. No question, yeah. because un until you fail you actually yeah. don't know what you're made of and it's one of those scary things that you're wondering in the night, will it happen and how will, it, how will I cope when it happens? And it happened to us and it's happened to thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. And, you know, the, the book is written for those people out there that are starting a business, have started a business, perhaps are struggling with a business, who want to start a business. And I really want more people to step out and bet on themselves and become self-employed. Tell us just a little bit about your own business. Carambola Kids is the business uh, today. It's a school lunch business. We started with uh, 27 lunches uh, in 2003 in Moyross, which is a very disadvantaged area in the country and particularly in Limerick. And uh, today we're sitting here this morning and we would have fed 20,000 children all over the country from Donegal to Kerry, from Carlingford Lock to Wexford. Nationwide business now, uh, employing over 100 people. And uh, so it's been great. And is it, come on, is it as simple as blood, sweat and tears? Is it just, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get? I don't think it's as simple as that. Okay. No, no, I don't think so. I think there has to be a market there for what it is you're providing. Um, and we happened to have stumbled across a market. And then we worked hard at it and we, I absolutely believe in do the job right and the money will follow. Uh, too many people, I think, 
chase the, the money I first. Think chase the money first. Yeah. And I think that's wrong. I think do the job first, and if the market is there and if the market is, is receptive, the money will, will follow. Now, I know, Colm, you are at pains to say that this book isn't someone who's loaded going, oh, it's so easy. Oh, yeah, yeah, so this book, it, it's interesting, the introduction, first of all, it's very easy to read because you break it down into blocks for Thank people. You. But you also say that it's for you. This book isn't about me. This is actually a book for you, for the reader. So what will a reader take from this, and who's it for? It's for anybody out there who has ever thought of starting a business and is afraid to take that first step. That's the first group. The second group it's for is for somebody who has actually taken the first step and is thinking, <laughs> it's actually scary. What the hell am I doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me go back. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it, I'd like to think it's a book of encouragement. It's, it's to say, do you know what, it's actually okay to fail. Uh, in, in the States, it's a badge of honor. Yes. And here it's, you know, it can be seen as a stigma. And I'm saying, forget about it. You know, let it be a badge of honor. Let's let, let earning your stripes. Almost. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And uh, I'm delighted, Karen Bowen with kids is going uh, really well. Um, but we've no idea what the landscape is going to be in, in ten years' time. You know, are you sensing the turn up there, Colm? Are we oh, facing into brighter days? No question, no question. Good. The green Good. shoots are real. On that positive note, we will leave it. Colm O'Brien, Feeding Johnny, How to Build a Business Despite the Roadblocks. A really good book for everyone. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Sinead. Lovely to meet you. Now, to celebrate the 200th anniversary of Jane Austen's Emma, this year we've chosen it as our book club choice for February. If you would like to be in with the chance of winning a Versus tablet and goodie bag, then simply send us your review by Friday, February the 27th. You can email them to irelandemmatv3.ie. You can also post your entry to Borgosh Energy Book Club, TV3, Westgate Business Park, Ballymount, Dublin 24. Lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club.